Welcome to Franklin Almanac. I'm Polixeni Manjari. Welcome to our third edition of Almanac, a compendium of life in Franklin. As always, we bring you important stories. What's happened, what's happening, what matters. Here at Franklin TV, we support many local organizations, some that residents don't even know exist. Our goal is to inform you about what's going on in Franklin. And while you may think you have it all covered, there are some big hearted organizations right next door. Our first story honors the spirit of Horace Mann, Franklin's father of education. In 2016, the Centers for Disease Control reported that one in 68 children in the United States were identified as having an autism spectrum disorder, ASD. These children and young people have difficulty with social communication and interaction. They have a difficult time making friends and carrying on a conversation. Later in life, they may have trouble maintaining a nutritious diet or advancing from school to college or to a job. For those affected by ASD, one local organization works to make life easier for them and their families. I'm talking about the Horace Mann Educational Associates. HMEA believes in the potential and dreams of people diagnosed with developmental disabilities. While they work to overcome their obstacles, HMEA works to provide proven therapies, whole life support, educational opportunities, and life-affirming experiences to make their lives easier. I sat down with Vice President of Development and Public Relations, Doug McPherson, to learn about what HMEA has to offer. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us, Doug. I appreciate it. So tell me about your role as Vice President at HMEA. Sure, by all means. Well, I'm the Vice President of Development, Public Relations, and Marketing. Mm -hmm. So it includes a few different hats you got to wear on a daily basis, sure. uh, but a lot of it is getting the branding name out about okay. HMEA. A little bit of fundraising over here and there, but really getting people to know what HMEA mm -hmm. is all about, because that's one of the things we find out people in our own backyard they say, what is HMEA? Right. And we're right here in Franklin, and I bump into that all the time. So it's a lot of that. I know that the organization serves about 3,800 children and adults with developmental disabilities. Right. So what services are you providing to these individuals? What ends up happening is on the autism side mm -hmm. is uh, a new mom or a new dad finds out that the child has just been diagnosed with autism right. and they go into panic mode and they need someone to talk to. And we've got an autism resource center that's it's located in West Boylston, oh. but it covers this whole region down here too wow. in other areas. Right. So what ends up happening is they're a referral, so they, they calm the person down, just say, it's okay, mm -hmm. it's okay. We deal with thousands of kids right. all the way up to 22 with autism. Mm -hmm. On the other side, the developmental disability side, we provide employment opportunities, mm -hmm. we provide day habilitation, which is like occupational therapy, okay. vocational therapy, um, and um, volunteering out in the community too. So it's those two sides right there. And those folks go from 22 up to 101. So wow. It's all, it's a full, it's a life lifespan of services, mm -hmm. we like to call it. And how are you offering these employment opportunities then? Sure. What ends up happening is uh, an individual turns 22, and if, if they're part of our programs, we try and find them a job. And what we do is we train them mm -hmm. on certain skills. Um, like we've got a florist shop, and we'll train them on money skills, we'll train them on sales skills, wow. interviewing skills, mm -hmm. things like that. What mm -hmm. inspired the name? Oh, uh, that's a great question. We, uh, what ended up happening was um, we were first known as the Rentham Research Foundation. Back yes, in, I read that. Back yeah. in 1961, back right. in Rentham State School, mm -hmm. and was just research. When we left there, we said, you know, we'd rather provide services, and we believed in true education for anybody of all abilities, right. all of those. And so we said, well, Hor Horace Mann was the founder of education, so exactly. let's go with Horace Mann. And Horace Mann was right here in Franklin, too. Right. It, it was just... It just makes sense. It, it just made a lot of sense. Yeah. You got the Horace Mann Middle School, you got the Horace Mann Park, the Horace Mann Plaza, mm -hmm. and I got Horace Mann Educational <laughs> Associates, so... Take us over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it really is. That was the inspiration. It was Horace Mann himself, and we believed in education. And we have a school now, too, so... Oh, tell me about the school. No, sure. The school is called the Darnell School, named after our founder, okay. um, Susan Darnell. After she retired, we built the school for very emotionally and intellectually and involved students that okay. school districts can't handle. Um, the school's actually located in Hudson, but they take out-of-district kids. That's great. Um, and then we educate them there. And mm -hmm. the, these are some very hard and difficult kids with I'm these sure. issues. You know, and, the, and the teachers are just amazing what they do. So, so once again, um, the Darnell 
named the school named after Darnell, mm-hmm. but then we would also have Horace Mann involved in it too. So that was, it was all education based. Perfect. That's know. amazing. Thank you. So I want to know, with uh, the new year ahead of us now, mm-hmm. what are you hoping to accomplish this year? The idea is to try and continue to grow, especially in the autism side. We start up a new program called Students for Hire, okay. and we're in, located in colleges, mostly in the Worcester area, but we're looking at Dean, <laughs> looking at Dean, potentially open up a satellite site there. What that does is takes students that are currently in school, mm-hmm. gives them an internship paid, oh, it's and it's, it's ideal, and yeah. what they do is they go into families' homes with a, with a, a, a true ABA therapist, mm-hmm. applied behavior analyst, and that gives them a job experience, so when they finally graduate, they, they've got full-time experience. It's loft, lofty goals, mm-hmm. I know, but um, it's, it's, cut, it's part of our plan. It, it <laughs> is achievable. achievable, that's right, that's right. One foot instead of the, in front of the other. Exactly. So for people who want to get involved, how mm-hmm. can they reach out and get your services? Sure, we've got two sides. Uh, one side is called a closed referral system, and okay. what that means is that we get refer, referrals from DDS, that stands for Develop, Department of Developmental Services. Okay. And what happens is an individual mom and dad that is, uh, their kid is in the regular school system, mm-hmm. but they're about to age out, so they say, okay. I've got to get some services, so they'll, we have to refer them to DDS. Yes. DDS then says, well, you live here, you should contact maybe HMEA, something like that, mm-hmm. and see if they've got some openings for your kids. So that's called the close of referral. So they can't come directly to us. They go to DDS and then back to us. The other system is where we can take people directly. It's called shared living. We're a typical family, like my, my wife and myself, mm-hmm. where our kids are all gone. We have a big house. We could take somebody in with disabilities, and we get a tax-free stipend, too, for that. Wow. So if anybody really wants to get involved and help with the mission of HMEA, mm-hmm. we have a couple of events that are coming up. And the big one, of course, is in Maine. It's on May 21st, right okay. at EMC, Dell EMC. <laughs> Excuse Careful. me. <laughs> Dell EMC in Franklin. Um, and that's uh, open to the public. And uh, we'll put some more news on that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And My thanks favorite. for wearing this blazer. Go Pats. Go Pats. <laughs> thank you we very much. It. I have to wear it this week. <laughs> I know. Thanks, thanks, Doug. I thanks, appreciate Jackson. it. Thank appreciate you. It. For most of us, a trip to the Registry of Motor Vehicles is the penance we pay for driving. The long, slow lines and occasionally rude customer service add up to a dreaded trip. But for local AAA members, that's all about to change. AAA's new location at the Franklin Village Plaza is making the lives of residents a bit easier. Friendly customer service and no lines will make your visit, dare I say, enjoyable. Let's take a look at what AAA has to offer Franklin residents. So what is your position here at AAA Intel? Well, I do public affairs for AAA, which means that I do all the interviews or most of the interviews with Massachusetts and Boston area media. So we talk about everything from traffic safety uh, to seat belts to autonomous vehicles to gas prices to AAA RMV services. So um, we are in the middle of a rollout of RMV AAA services across Massachusetts, and we're very proud of that. We think it's a tremendous service for our AAA members. It really gives them uh, choice and convenience when it comes to doing registry transactions. Now, how long has the AAA location here in Franklin been around for the residents? Yeah, we actually had the ribbon cutting for uh, the Franklin branch, the AAA RMV program, uh, just a couple of months ago. So it's uh, very recent here in Franklin. So we're definitely looking to get the word out. We do registry transactions here in Franklin at at our other AAA branch locations uh, from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. And we also do uh, registry transactions at our AAA branches that offer registry services on Saturdays from 9 to 1. And I think that's really significant. Our Saturday hours are really popular because of the fact that for working people and working families, Saturday may be the only time that they're able to get into a branch. We do offer the only Saturday registry hours in Massachusetts. One of the things that we pride ourselves on at our AAA branch locations and at our AAA RMV program is our member service. Uh, We have wonderful member service counselors. Uh, We have uh, our MS are trained in registry services. We give uh, five diamond service at AAA, which I think is really critically important. And we simply offer an alternative for people that's convenient. Often our lines are a little bit shorter than the registry line, so people can get in and out of the branch very quickly. If you have a lunch break, you can probably get over to your AAA Franklin location on your lunch break and do 
your registry transaction. But what you can do uh, here in Franklin are any kind of routine license or registration renewal. Uh, we do uh, many duplicate licenses and duplicate registrations. Uh, we do some title work. We have uh, uh, plate stickers for uh, your license plates, but no plate transactions. So uh, we do a whole number and a whole wide array of services. Um, but again, no origination services, only those routine license and registration renewals. Now with Franklin being a fairly new location, can we expect more locations across Massachusetts? Yes, we definitely can expect more locations uh, across Massachusetts. Um, we have registry services right now in about half, just over half of our 30 Massachusetts AAA branches. And we actually are looking to roll out services next in Waltham, Mass. So uh, we're in the middle right now of uh, a concerted rollout that we've been working on uh, for several months. And when customers are coming into AAA, what services do you offer? Uh, we offer a variety of things. We do registry. We do. Um, we can help them with their trips, whether it's just a cross-country trip or driving to um, local areas, or we can help them internationally. Cruises, um, Europe is very popular, Iceland, things like that. Um, we have insurance. We have finance. We also are very lucky. We're probably one of the only offices that has both a mortgage person and a student lending um, officer here. Bottom line, is we just help them whenever possible. So we'll go out of our way so they don't have to. What brings you into AAA today? Well, the reason I came in here was to get some, uh, I had to go to the registry and I decided not to go all the way over to uh, Milford because I wanted to check out the services here. People that have come in here have had just tremendous experiences here at AAA. Their registry section, uh, they've come in, they get the things that they have to uh, get done, taken care of. It's done in five, ten minutes versus going over to Milford or any of the other registry branches where they have to go and sit for an hour or two hours. Uh, here, they're in and out. Uh, the service is tremendous. The people are friendly. They, they greet them. Uh, it's just such a different experience than going to the regular registry. Have you ever been in a position where tragedy or crisis turn your life upside down? If you have, you know how difficult it can be to handle everyday responsibilities, like making a home-cooked meal or walking the dog. A local charity called the Neighbor Brigade is encouraging Franklin residents to reach out in their time of need. Neighbor Brigade establishes community-specific networks of volunteers that can be mobilized to help residents facing sudden crisis manage day-to-day -day tasks, such as meal preparation, rides, and basic household chores. I spent a morning sitting down with Neighbor Brigade organizers and volunteers to learn more about how they are making a difference in the lives of local residents and people all over Massachusetts. I'm so excited to have you guys here to talk about this incredible organization that you're part of, the Neighbor Brigade. And I wanted to start off with you, Linda. You know, as a, a chapter leader, I love the idea of, you know, the Neighbor Brigade helping people in a crisis. So tell me a little bit about the organization and how you guys do that. So it's a short-term crisis that we're focused on in people's lives when tragedy just turns a life upside down. Mm -hmm. So what I love about what Neighbor Brigade is all about, we're just using a neighbor approach of really paying attention to the needs of others during this time and being time sensitive mm -hmm. to their needs. Right. Um, not jumping in at the immediate part of it, but offering our resources to come around them when they're ready for us. So what kind of services do you provide and how long do these individuals receive these services? We cook, we can walk a dog, we can do an, I don't know, thank Light you. housekeeping. Light yeah, housekeeping, light, thank you. Right. Dog walking. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, we, it can last anywhere from a week for a need or months. Um, okay. We've gone as long as a year mm -hmm. helping families. Wow. Um, and part of it is that we become like a neighbor attachment to them and mm -hmm. we appreciate and enjoy the relationship that we've fostered helping them in that crisis. So um, we give them the opportunity to decide when they can move on and accept a new normal, we call it. Right. And I love that you kind of give them a little bit of space so, you know, they can, you know, recover from whatever crisis that they're experiencing and you're not kind of getting yourself too, too involved, which mm -hmm. I think is awesome. So Polly, as the executive director, how many people do you work with? Um, weekly, annually, what are the statistics? Yeah, so we currently have 30 chapters. Okay. Um, Franklin is one of our strongest chapters. Mm -hmm. We've recently grown into surrounding states, so we're also in Connecticut, Rhode oh, Island, great. and Maine. 
That's awesome. Which is exciting. Yeah. Um, each chapter just varies on size. Franklin has close to 200 volunteers. Okay. Um, That's as a an, lot. It is a lot. Yeah. Um, as an organization, as a total, we have mm-hmm. over 3,000 volunteers. Um, in like, in Massachusetts Throughout alone? Massachusetts, wow. Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Maine. Wow. Um, so, yeah. And we've been doing this since 2010 mm-hmm. as a nonprofit organization. But informally, we've been doing this since about 2003 mm-hmm. when our founder, Pam Washek, um, started the organization with her friend, Jean Seiden. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I want to switch gears to you, Anne, and I know you are a volunteer. Yes. So I'd love to hear your experience about why did you get involved with the organization? I got involved because I can. I mean, I have the time. I have the resources. Right. I'm able to do it. Mm-hmm. So that's the main reason why I got involved. Okay. Um, a secondary reason would be because I have three um, children, mm-hmm. two teens and a tween right oh, now, wow. and I wanted to show them the importance of what it's like to help neighbors. Right. Since I started volunteering, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, mm-hmm. and I actually did need the service. Okay. Um, I didn't actually use Neighborhood Brigade, but I did have meals delivered to me and my family, and it was um just a godsend. Share with us some of you know the most incredible stories. It was Christmas Eve this okay. last year, yeah. and um, a an email went out to the whole chapter. Mm-hmm. Someone they had been servicing recently um, was immediately and unexpectedly displaced from his house. And one of the volunteers invited him over for um, a Christmas dinner mm-hmm. um, because he had nowhere to go. Oh, wow. Another volunteer put him in a hotel for three days um, okay. because he had no place to live for three days mm-hmm. while he transitioned into his new housing. We have fostered beauty to our families mm-hmm. of knowing that we're not just doing a neighbor brigade quick request, answer it, done. We're really paying attention and stopping and listening and mm-hmm. taking time with people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what kind of separates you from other organizations in general, which mm-hmm. I think is incredible. Um, I want to know a little bit about where you see the future of this organization going. Because I know you said that you're in a few states, but where yeah. do you see it happening? Yeah, so we're really excited that just in the last two months, really, we've expanded to surrounding states mm-hmm. um, around Massachusetts. And that's where we see it going, is just organically growing. Um, everyone who started a chapter out of Mass- Massachusetts mm-hmm. had a connection to someone here. Okay. Um, so it was an aunt, it was a sister, it was a niece, it was somebody mm-hmm. that was serviced. So that's kind of how we see it growing, is okay. organically, naturally word of mouth, um, people want to bring it to their community. Great. Yeah. So for people who want to be in Anne's position and want to volunteer and give back, how can they get involved with the organization? Yeah, so there are two ways um, to get involved. You can go to our website at www.neighborbrigade.org um, and there is an application process to become a volunteer. We do um, background checks okay. as well. Um, we want to make sure it is important for both our volunteers and for our recipients. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's part of the process. On the other side, if people need to receive our services, they can also go to the website to request help, but they can also give us a call. So our phone number is 781-325-8580. That's great. So So you kind of make it easy for everyone to get involved. Yeah. Like we said before, you can volunteer once a year, once a month, once a week, whatever works with your schedule. It's Mm -hmm. very easy. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming by and taking Mm -hmm. the time to spend some time with us and share these incredible stories. I I just love this organization. So I'm very uh, honored to have you here and we hope to work with you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. The Neighbor Brigade has helped hundreds of people. One local resident invited us into her home to talk about how the brigade changed her life in her time of need. In June of 2013, I lost my husband. Um, He was 44, suddenly and unexpectedly, to a fatal heart arrhythmia. A friend of my older daughter, Molly, her mom is a part of Neighbor Brigade. Her name is Susan Baker. And she reached out to me um, saying that there is this wonderful group of Franklin people, and they are wonderful, Neighbor Brigade, and um, would like to help you. I, I can't thank the people enough. Um, the community of Franklin really came together for my kids and myself. They would come. They would hug me. They would um, put in a card, give a smile, just let us know that we weren't alone. I hope someday that I can be a part of Neighbor Brigade and pay it forward. Here at Franklin TV, we work to provide Franklin residents with local access to television and now to radio as well. On February 2nd at 1029 a.m., Franklin TV launched a new community radio station, WFPR Franklin Public Radio on 102.9 FM.
As we welcome our new radio station right here in Franklin, I sat down with Ken Norman, president of Franklin TV, to hear all about our new community service. So, Ken, I just want to thank you for taking the time to sit down with me and talk to us about the uh, new radio station, 102.9 WFPR. It's very exciting. So I know that this was in years of, you know, in the making. Yes. So tell me why you decided to add a radio station to Franklin TV. Well, back maybe three or four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, Peter came to me and then ultimately to our board of directors uh, with the idea that the uh, FCC was opening up 100-watt radio stations okay. to nonprofit organizations. Okay. And that uh, he had been looking into it, and he saw an opportunity for Franklin TV mm -hmm. to get a license to broadcast on a radio station. Okay. So uh, Pete has one heck of an engineering background mm -hmm. that goes back to radio when he was probably age 16. He initiated an application to the FCC, uh, the Federal Communications Commission, mm -hmm. to uh, to get a build building license for the radio station. Okay. And that goes back, I believe, uh, two or three, maybe, uh, probably three years. Mm -hmm. to much to our amazement, uh, we were one of 23 uh, applications in Massachusetts that were approved. Oh wow! Uh, for for the station, and this right. was going on across the country, mm -hmm. and they were strictly for nonprofits. Okay. And uh, so that's how we got involved. We thought it was an opportunity to link Franklin TV with a radio station. Right. Absolutely. A, a community radio station. That's great. So I know that uh, we went on the air on February 2nd at approximately 1029. Very clever. Um, so how far of an audience does this radio um, reach? It varies. It's a radio station. Uh, we're not, with the cable operation, it's limited to people here in town that right. subscribe to it. Yes. But it's a it's a broadcast station. Uh, it we hope to cover all of Franklin, although, mm -hmm. although there are some spots here in town where we're not getting the signal. Okay. For people who are going to be tuning in to listen, what content are you hoping to provide them? Well, we're hoping to provide local community contact, mm -hmm. uh, and we're hoping to initiate that in May. Uh, right now, we're just doing uh, uh, easy listening music mm -hmm. while we are tweaking the system and getting it right. Right. So we're hoping to start broadcasting community programs, and, and some of it will come from Franklin TV. Right, of course. Uh, yeah. Some of the things that we do are basically interview shows like this, mm -hmm. and it lends itself to radio because there really is no visuals involved. Right. Uh, and, of course, we would be broadcasting all of the town uh, meetings, the uh, town council, uh, planning board, all of those meetings mm -hmm. will be covered on the radio as well. Great. Well, based off of what you just said, what would you say separates WFPR from everyone else? Hoping that we will attract people to want to do radio mm -hmm. uh, because it's a little more intimate and you're not dealing with the cameras. Right. Yeah, I was going to say it sounds a little bit more intimate. Um, so with the radio station being community-based, I know people can um, join in and volunteer and be a part of the radio station themselves. How can they do that, and what opportunities do we provide them for that? Well, right. We've, we've always taken the philosophy, build it, they'll come. Mm -hmm. and, and, we're, <laughs> yeah. and we're starting to get inquiries. People are okay. starting to inquire about doing something mm -hmm. uh, with us. We don't want the same type of show you know, 20 of the same type. Exactly. Of yeah, yeah, you want yeah. some variety. Super, exactly. Yeah, and so. mostly Franklin-based? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, right. uh, although I think we could reach out if it if it's an event that's uh, outside of Franklin, mm -hmm. but it involves Franklin. Right, somewhere. yeah, that works. Yeah, that works as well. You know, some of the things I was thinking of, we were, uh, uh, I was down at the uh, uh, museum, mm -hmm. the historic museum, okay. uh, and they were having an event uh, two weeks ago. And I was thinking, well, you know, it would be great if we could broadcast live from there. Yeah. And that, and, and that hopefully It's more would, popular nowadays, too, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. but yeah, we could go on site and broadcast events live. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that would give them the, uh, you know, help draw in more people into the museum. Mm -hmm. uh, Makes and, you feel like you're there without being there. Exactly. Right. Things. Great. Big things in the future. Yes. That's wonderful. That's right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we look forward to tuning in and hearing some great things on 102.9. Make sure to tune into 102.9 WFPR to hear the familiar voices of your Franklin friends and neighbors. And if you're interested, you can join in.
If you've ever wanted to be on the air and have something to say, WFPR is your station. Feel free to call WFPR at 508-528-9377, and you could be the next voice of Franklin Public Radio. Radio by and for the people. February is the shortest month of the year, yet for everyone in New England, it's been a long but exciting one. This month will be remembered as one with a killer Super Bowl victory and when good old Poxitani Phil saw his shadow and correctly predicted our back-to-back -back snowstorms. However, this month should also be remembered as one of perseverance. We are all continuing to work on life and career goals with the ongoing pressure of making this year better than the last. When you find yourself struggling to get through that last squat or not getting that promotion you've been waiting for, the power of perseverance has proven time and time again to make you a stronger person. As we move into March, a month with less snowfall and more luck, make this your motto. Fall down seven times, get up eight. I think Tom Brady would approve. This wraps up our third edition of Franklin Almanac. As we continue to bring you more stories, we want to hear from you. Just email us at almanac at franklin.tv and let us know what you're interested in. Who knows, your idea might be on our next episode. We look forward to seeing you again soon. For Franklin Almanac, I'm Polixeni Manjari.